Let us pray. Bow down your head. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. The internal rock of Egypt, the beginning and the end, the Lord of all laws, the, 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 the mighty man in battle, he that liveth forevermore, he that liveth forevermore, he that liveth forevermore. We appreciate your holy name. We thank you for today's service. We know you are going to talk. We know you are, your power is going to move more and more. Basukiande Palandu si anda kayaba. This is Prata Lucy India Pakipa. Maparapalendi Prototuske Belende. Merata Ipasika Parubia Nanda Dakusia. Mata Dasu Ti Krisa Pila Tusi. Mamene Pratuse Ipalata Prada Musiana. Mimana Mata Kuse Kete Prada. Le <laughs> Say thank you, Jesus. We ask you, O God, that you take perfect control of this service and let your Holy Spirit be us all. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we are going to uh, let everywhere be silent, please, as this thing is, uh, as the message is in on record. By the special grace of God, we are going to talk about the book of life. The book of life. You have heard about hell. You have heard what is happening in hell. But listen to me, all. If anybody call you at this moment, cut it. Don't answer the person. Don't go out. Don't leave. Make sure you are here. Listen from the beginning to the end. Because I know some people that like to just come in, come out, come in, come out. That kind of uh, uh, attitude is not good at all. This is service. When you are in the service, you are in the service. Not going in, come out, uh, come again, come go out again, come in again, go out. If you know you want to do something, you put it in silence and you, you are still hearing what they, 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 they are saying. Yeah. If you are coming in, come in at it and listen to the word of God. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. The theme, or let me say the topic of the program for today is the book of life. I would like to silence everybody.
The program today is the book of life. The book of life. Ah, I know you might have been hearing about the book of life, the book of life. The truth is this. Without this book of life, you are going nowhere. Without this book of life, you are not going to make heaven. So the book of life is so, so important. According to the revelations of God and the, the encounters of God, the book of life can be described. According to how it is, some people are describing their own as a book with the body of gold, pure gold. Some people are describing it that the book of life is like a white, white color. The body is white. Whether it's of gold or it's of white, that does not matter. What is important is what is it meant for? The color it has, whether it is yellow, whether it is brown, whether it is, whether, whether it is uh, blue, whatever the color the book of life may carry, that is not, the color is not what is important. Because even though you can recite the color, the whole color in the book of life, that does not say your name is there. And that does not say you make heaven. But what matters is what is it meant for? What is it meant for? What is the, the, the book of life meant for? That is what matter most. According to what the Lord God have told me, and according to Bible, because I used to tell you all that anyone that will come in the name of the Lord and tell you a revelation, if the revelation is not according to the Bible, don't accept it. I have had many encounters with the devil. I have had encounters with the fallen angels. I have had encounter with the, with the spirit of death. I have known the cunning area. In the time I want to get married, I know how Satan deceived me. So I know many things. When I was praying for marriage, when I wanted to get married, I know how Satan deceived me in many areas. And I know how God saved me. So listen to me very well. Even though the person claimed that he and Jesus used to, used to sit together every day, that Jesus used to sleep in his house. Ah, my dear, the kind of relationship I have with Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ used to sleep in my house. Even though he tell you that it's just like that you should bait him every day. Do every revelation he said must be according to the Bible. I'm just using that as an example. Jesus never sleep. He never eat. His food is praise and worship. But what I'm saying is this. Everything a man will tell you must be from the scripture. If that message is not from the scripture, it's not from God. God never control, uh, uh, contradict his word. It's not an author of conviction. So every revelation must be from the Bible. That is why I'm very, very careful. Let me tell you this. Many false heresy, let me say for, uh, false preachers, or let me say false messages, or let me say heresy that is being circulating all around the world. It is as a result of their own personal revelations. Some people say that treasure is good. If you ask them that, how do you know that treasure is good? They will tell you that as they are reading the Bible, the spirit of the Lord interpret it for them. They will tell you that it is the spirit of God that interpret it for them. Everybody are just lying against the spirit of God every day. On the sake of saying, I see God. So because of that, 
I am going to tell you what the book of life is all about. Why is this so important? I remember in those days, when I was still seven years old, let me tell you my background. I think you have heard about it before. When I was in the baby, a bed. Before that, before my mother could give birth to me, it takes a long, a little bit, a long, longer time. When she later gave birth to me, when I was three much old or two much old, my mother was beating me and a big belt. When I talk about big bear, a big, very big one that people have never seen in the world came inside, flying inside our house where my mother was. Well, we are living in flat there. So where my mother was beating me, he came to the bedroom. He began to fly. By the looking up of my, my mother looked up, he saw that that person was having a woman head. That bed was having a woman head. He asked, a, let me say, somebody like somebody who is having a head like me, but the, from here, from here downward is bed, bed. Black one. My mother was scared. She began to call Jesus. And she disappeared, and that bed disappeared. After a few weeks to that time, I was on my bed in my in the room. When uh, my mother, uh, you know, in those days that uh, all those big big beds, they are using big big bed then. So we are still using it, but uh, they used to put it in something like uh, like a like a iron this thing now. Uh -huh. Then so they put me there. My father was sleeping at the back. My mother was sleeping in the front, so they put me in the middle. By the daytime, when, after, when the morning came, my mother wanted to feed me because she slept off throughout the midnight. As she wanted to feed me in the morning, she found out that I was no more in the bed. At the age of three, two to three months, she began to cry, where is my baby? Where's my baby? Who came here? They begin to find me all around. They call my sister. My sister, forget this. Slept. All of them slept because I'm the only main child. Do you see Peter? They say, we do see. They begin to look around. My father is a pastor anyway, but he's a, he's a holy pastor from the beginning. So in a group, they begin to look around for me. They look, my mother cry. By the time they get to the palace, begin to look everywhere. Where is Peter? Who take him? Then my father prayed. As he prayed, the Holy Spirit said, go to the palace, open the long chair. By the time they opened the long chair, they saw that I was under the long chair. Uh, the angel came and put a mat, small mat on that long chair. There was a meek that my mother has prepared for me. The angel went and take the meek where my mother kept it and gave me the feeder, you know feeder, meek in the feeder. So I have already drank the feeder. The meek was in a separate place. I was in a separate place. So when the angel came and gave me the feeder, I was drinking the meek in the feeder under the chair. And they were all surprised from the inner room to the parlor. How come who take this idea under the chair? And the Lord said to my father, he said, the, the, the devil, the enemy came in the midnight. But before he came, I forget he sent my angel to hide him. He said, that, that is where he got to know that the son he gave back to is not just ordinary man of God. But the man of God who has come for a purpose. God now told him that they wanted to kill him because they have seen what he has come to do on earth. Hallelujah. When I grew up and I was seven years old, Jesus now began to appear to me physically. He began to tell me many things. Many things. Many things. 
He takes me like a baby. Even when I was seven years, he will take me in his hand, put my head on his chest. I will hear the heartbeat of God. I is breathing. He will talk to me. When they beat me, even though I am the one that is wrong, God is more, in fact, Jesus is more beautiful. He's more loving than anybody on earth. Even though I'm the one that is fought, they beat me, I will run before I get to, there's a particular play, point, point we used to meet. Before I get there, he will have been there sitting, waiting for me. He will take me on the edge and begin to pet me. And he will tell me, look. So I will look. He will tell me, look. By the time I look, there will be a vision that opened. A vision will open, and I will begin to see many churches. You will see what my see what they are doing in my church. I have come to, I have sent you to correct the church, to correct the pastors, and to prepare them for heaven. So by the time he told me everything about myself, including the time I'm going to die, he tells me you are going to die at this age. At this age, at this age, after you have done this, you have done that. He said, don't be afraid. I will come and take you when the time comes. After that, he used to come to me. He told me I grew up. He still come to me. There was a particular time he came to me that he showed me what end time is all about, which I'm still going to teach you on that. In that time, I told I, I for the first time I told him I want to follow him. I want to follow him to heaven. He now looked at he, he was ascending when he was speaking to me. We were talking before, we were sitting down before talking, talking to me, showing me revelation of the end time. As he was telling me, and I was seeing it, he began to ascend little by little. He was going up. As he was ascending, I asked him a question. I said, Are you leaving me? He said, No. I said, please, I want to go with you now. And I said, in our love, and I said, you can't take go with me now. You have to go and tell the people what I have for you for them. You have to, the reason why I sent you is about to manifest now. You have to go and do it. If you finish doing it, I will come and take you. It's a promise. It's a promise he made. And I believe in God that there's no way. There's no way things can be so hard in this world, in this earth, I will make heaven at last. Say it, say it to yourself that you will make heaven at last. Don't be too proud. Say it to yourself that I will make heaven at last. You see, after that, the Lord begin to reveal many things to me. Many things, many problems of the church, including marriage. Including the marriage of people. It tell me details. Marriage is one of the issues that the church are very careful to, to come into the matter. To judge. It tells me what it is a marriage, what marriage is all about. So when I'm talking about marriage, I go into details. I go into details. I accept I'm looking at time. But right now, we are not talking about marriage now. We want to talk about the book of life. The book of life is called a heavenly book. This book of life is like a book of recognition. A book of redemption. A book of record. Listen to me, there are different type of record, but this book is not meant to record sin. It is not meant to record any iniquities. It is not meant to record even your holiness. It is only meant to record your name, your name. And uh, before that your name can be eaten, that can enter the book of life. They are procedures. They are don't and do that you must do, that you must follow. Number one, this book of life is without stain. 
if you even if the let me do for let me see for example if the book of life is right here now and you are sweeping the floor for example let me say it is the book of life is right here now and you are sweeping the floor you are sweeping the floor and you begin to sweep that thing into the the book the, no matter how you pour sand you pour it on that book that sand will just flow out it's, a, it's as if there is a body, let's say, uh, let's say bulletproof on it. That is, there's no stain that can touch it. If there is, let me say, if there is a, uh, there is a, there is a oil, dirty oil on the floor. And that oil is so dirty that if that, if anything touch the oil, it will be stained, it will be dirty, it will not remove again. If, for example, if the book of life is real now, and you book the book of life, you dig it inside that oil, that dirty oil. You put it in there and you begin to mix it together. By the time you raise it up, you'll be surprised. It will be still as white as holy. Not even a dot will be on, on his head. It means it's so perfectly holy. No stain, no dirty, no ink. There's no ink in there. Everybody's name is written with the blood of Jesus. No ink there. Your name is written with the blood of Jesus. No ink, no bio, no anything. Your name will be automatically appear. There's no angel writing name there. Listen to me very well. There's no angel writing name in the book of life. That we say, okay, let me, I'm the one holding bio. Let me write the book. Let me write the name of uh, uh, Sister Gift Nandaba. Let me write the name there. There's no angel doing that. The name will automatically appear, pram, and with you automatically clean, pram. The book of life, the only book. I will tell you the qualification for you to enter to, to your name to be written in the book of life. And I will tell you what you can do that can make, remove your name from the book of life. Can holiness take you there? Can holiness write your name in the book of life? No. Listen to me very well. Can righteousness write your name in the book of life? No. Listen to me very well. Can you, because you are a preacher and God called you, does it mean your name is written in the book of life? No. Because there is a grace upon your life and you should see Jesus Christ. You know yourself that whenever you talk, the spirit of God talk through you. And your name, is your name written in the book of life? No. I am filled with the Holy Ghost fire. When I feel the Holy Spirit, Spirit is moving inside me, that Holy Spirit is inside you does not mean that your name is written in the book of life. Let me tell you something very well. The Holy Spirit is powerful and it's merciful at the same time. That the Holy Spirit is inside you, or is living beside you, or is working with you. You used to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit everywhere. Does it mean that you are going to enter the book of life? No. Sir, sir, sir. I used to preach holiness every day. I never compromised. My name is written in the book of life. No. Sir, I am the first one that used to come to the church. I always love you, Lord. Does it mean that my name is written in the book of life? No. Sir, oh, oh, I help the work of the ministry. I pay my tithe. I do this. I pay my tithe. I pay my offering. In fact, I double my tithe. I double my offering. My name is written in the book of life. Is it true? No. Tithe cannot write your name in the book of life. Sir, I read to, I used to read my Bible every day, every day and night. I used to read my Bible. Is my name written in the book of life? No. 
then how will my name be written in the book of life? You will wait and hear that. Then, but how does it happen that somebody who God is using is using the power of God to heal the sick, to cast out demons? And his name is not written in the book of life because I know you cannot cast out demon without the Holy Spirit. And he said, the Holy Spirit. It means that spirit is a holiness. And I know, how can that person's name not written in the book of life? That, but for you to cast out demon, for you to cast out the evil one, does not mean your name is written in the book of life. I will tell you how your name can be written here. So open the book of Luke. Open the book of Luke. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Starting from verses 17 to verses 20. I will read. Starting from verses 17 to verses uh, 20. I will read. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devil has subject unto us through your name. Through your what? Your name. Verses 18. And he said unto them, Behold, Satan, behold. He said, okay, he said, said to them, I behold Satan as lightning falling from heaven. When they were casting out demons, Jesus was, Jesus was not with them, but he saw how Satan was falling from uh, his throne. Verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpent and scorpion. I beg, listen to this one very well. Behold, I give unto you power to trample on serpent and a scorpion. That God gave you the power to trample on scorpion and, that, uh, and the power of darkness. Does it mean that your name is written in the book of life? No. Read it continuously. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You see that? You see that? Verse 20 now. That's the key word. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirit are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your name are written in the book of life. Many pastors always reject because, uh, rejoice because the anointing upon them is so powerful. They know the scriptures when they pray, they feel the power of God coming down. They can speak in tongue. They can blast in tongue. They can, you know, they can, they can speak and heaven will come down. And in this, they are rejoicing. T.B. Joshua came. He began to do miracles. He began to cast out demons. But yet, he was not preaching the word of God. Though he preached, claiming he preached the Bible. But he's not preaching the word of God. The Bible verse we just read now is Luke chapter 10. Verses 17 to verses uh, to 20. He wasn't preaching the word of God. There are many thousands of people who God is using. I have a son in the Lord. God is also using him as mightily. But a biker, he has money, he does that. But the Lord showed me a revelation one day. And the Lord showed me that he is like a frog. Frog in the spirit. And the Lord was telling me that what does a frog mean? And I said, a frog, a frog means uh, a dirty things. 
is thinking things. People do not like to take a frog or even touch it because it's a dirty thing. And now God said he's so dirty in his present. He's a dirty servant of God. He's a prophet. He's a dirty person. I went to him and uh, I talked to him. I trained him. But when he became, when he go and he became independent, he, 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 he start compromising the world. I talked to him. I said to him, I said, what you are doing is not good. You will pray for somebody and you request money. It is normal for people to pay their tithe to you if you are the one preaching to them or you are laboring to them. But it's not good for you to ask them for money in exchange of your prayers. See the way you are bobbing your head. See the way your wife is dressing. Preach the word. I feel forgetting the doctrine that I have carried and you have seen me preach. He said, I never forget. And because of that, the wife convinced his husband. He said, don't follow Pastor Peter again. He said, opposed to his, 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 his message is too powerful. Is too strong. He said, the way he said, I know your calling, my husband. Your own calling is to preach grace. His own calling is to preach holiness. Your two of you are different. Don't follow him anymore. The man loved me so dearly. The man cherished me, but because of his wife. He don't follow me anymore. He can greet me sometimes. He don't bother to come and see me anymore. But I have seen my own. And that day and not later, God showed me the revelation. Now people were saying that they saw the wife. Before she didn't use to wear trousers, she we just use a small earring. Right now, she's now using bigger earring. She's using a his attachment will reach the back. The back is wearing trousers. A pastor's wife, a holiness, a pastor that is preaching holiness before, compromising the gospel. And do you know what? The power of God never leaves him. The anointing never leaves him. He's still speaking tongues. He still cast out demons. He still do many things. Many people are giving testimony whenever he prays for somebody. But is his name written in the book of life? I can plainly tell you that no. God is a God of holiness. Hallelujah. I told you that I went to a minister conference one day. And people who were there were so many. Pastor, we were there. Everybody were holiness preachers. Holiness preachers, including myself. The pastor called me to come and minister the gospel to them that I should just come and give them short messages. And I said, it's okay. As I was say, I was sitting down, contemplating, asking God to speak through me because I didn't prepare a message before I went to anywhere. And God said, he said to me, he said, do you know, my son, that if I come today, only two out of these ministers of God is qualified to make a I said, what do you mean, sir? Ah, these people are holiness preachers, sir. They are holiness preachers. And God said to me that only two is qualified to make heaven. What do you think God is saying here? By the time he told me, I became, my heart fainted. I was bitterly painful. And by the time I got to the podium, and do you know what? I couldn't preach anymore. I couldn't say anything anymore. By the time I came to the podium, all what I just said is that the Lord said to me that only people are qualified to make heaven here. Do you know what happened? I was surprised that Jews, general overseer of churches, founder of churches, pastors, prophets, apostles, so called apostles, they fell and began to cry like a baby. Even though I do ask, I do call for altar call because they are ministers of God, they fell themselves and began to cry. Cry for their sin. The pastor who invited me, he lie on the floor. He began to roll on the floor. He began to cry. Moko began to come out of his nose. What am I saying? Is it because that you are a pastor that is, your name is written in the book of life? No, forget it. That too does not matter. Ah, sir, I'm very careful. Be careful is not what makes your name written in the book of life. 
The book of life is a life that is holy, perfectly holy. What will take you and makes you and makes your name written in the book of life? I will tell you. If you open to the book of uh, book of John, the book of John chapter three, John chapter three. Therefore, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of Jew. Verse 2, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do this miracle that thou doest. Except God be with him. Verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man being born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man being born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Number four, verse four. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? I am 80 years old, and you are asking me to be born again. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Verse five. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Praise the Lord. I know you have been reading the same verse I have read for you now. But there's a thing I want you to understand that you did not understand. Born again of a matter is more than your expectation. Born again matter is more than your expectation. It's more than you saying that, Lord, I've given my life to you. Lord, I surrender all to you. It's more than that. It is a, it is a, ah, uh, it is an issue of you becoming a true sight of God. It is a woman being that gave back to you before, but now you have now come and said, Lord Jesus, I want to be born of the spirit. I want to be your son. That somebody gave back to you and you are going to touch. That does not mean that you are son. A art of you becoming a son of God. That is what makes you to be born again. And before you can be a son of God, you have to confess your sin. You know, you pass through some procedures. When you pass through some procedures, they are going to be a bet in the spirit. Jesus will have to bet, give back to you. So you will now have to die in the, in the body. It's not that your, your body will die and be buried, but you will die in the body and in the spirit by flesh. You will die by flesh. And what did that mean by dying by flesh? It said in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It said, all things are what? I pass away. Behold, I mean. <laughs> yeah, it said, I am a new creation. So you have to become a new creation. The old things will pass away. The old man inside you will pass away. If you are a type of person that you used to be angry before, when you are not born again, that anger must go. 
That anger must go completely. If you are a type of person that used to be lost, that loss must go. You, will, you must not have the appetite for loss any longer. If you are a type of person that you used to uh, uh, you used to keep malice with people, that malice must go. You used to buy back, that buy back must go. You used, to, you, used to, you used to do all kind of sin. That sin must leave your life completely. Why? Because the old one, the person who used to do that before, has died. The person, the old man, the old Peter, the old Peter, the old Peter that used to commit that sin before, I died. He has been crucified. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. He said, 25 of 25, 25 of 25, he said, crucify the affections. The passion and the affection of the flesh. You crucify it. That person has been crucified with Jesus. It will come to a stage that you yourself, you look at your life and said, I would I commit a sin today? Would I commit a sin today? Eh? You will be begging yourself to commit a sin. You will not be able to do that. It will become a hard thing for you to do, to, 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 to do because you are no more than man. You are no, you are no more that person. The person that used to commit sin, you are no more that person. You are now a son of God. You are that person have died. The old Peter have died. Now a new Peter is reborn. Jesus, we have to labor and give back to you, give back to you afresh like a baby. In the spirit, physically you have not become a baby. But spiritually, you have become a baby in the hand of Jesus. And now you are no more the man of, you are no more the son of man anymore. You have become the son of God. If you open your book to the book of a John chapter 1 verse 12, he said for those who believe, he gives them the power to become the sons of God. As I'm just saying, it's beginning to write the scripture down. He said, for those who believe, he gave them the power to become the children of God, the son of God. The power, that power that is given to you is the ability that makes you to become a born again. It is not that you just said, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just, it's more than saying, I'm sorry. The ability of becoming a sonship, a sonship of God, an ability that before you can become a sonship of God, you will have the kidney, you must have passed through some procedure, some protocol. You will have passed through some protocol, some procedure will have passed it right. The old man in you, that old Akish, that old Ife, that old Fumi, that old Peter has died. You are now a, you are now born, you are a new creation. A new creature. Don't forget that book of life. It is meant to record names. Only the names of the sons of God only. That is what it's meant for. God is recording his own songs. He's giving a sign. And how will you know that truly I have become truly an image of God? You must come to an image, a, 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 a point whereby you will be seeing, eh? people will be seeing Jesus in you. A point whereby Jesus will look at you and he will be seeing himself inside you. How did a goat be called a goat? How, can, how did a goat become a goat? A goat will first be cooked and be cooked and be, you know, be born and be born and be born. How will the, will the man who is burning the goat know that this goat has become a goat? When he born the goat to a state whereby the man, he look at the goat and he see himself on that goat. The goat became a transparent like a glass. He was able to look at the goat and he see him, his pistol on that goat. Then he will stop burning it. He know that it is not yet to be used. 
And do you know that that is why God did not use you? Most of you, God called you, but you see your, your ministry is not going anywhere. Your life is not going anywhere because God is still burning you. God is still cooking you. You are not yet in that area. Everybody is telling you that you have a call. This one is telling you that you have a call. Even though you start the calling, that thing will close. Because it is, Jesus has not seen himself in you. You have to become, you have to, it, you have to become a particular area and a stage whereby Jesus will look at you and will be seeing his picture inside you. That is when you become a true son of God. A point whereby Satan come to you and he, and he bring microscope, he bring microscope onto your body, and he begin to film your body, ah, and he said, "This brother, you know, you know, you know they walk in death. Eh? He look at your life. There's no, there is no even a dot of sin in your life. Not even a dot of sin in your life. He look at your life. He, okay, so, okay, 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 so, okay, okay. Let us watch how he speak. By the time he look at how you speak, he see that your conversation is holy. So okay, okay, okay. Let us see how he thinks. He look at how he thinks. You never think like a proud person, like a point with proud. Most of you, you always think like I am older than this person. That mentality is pride. When it get to a point, there are not a second that tell me that I should preach about pride. That most Christians will end up in air because of pride. That you are saying ah, you are prostrating for your for, for somebody does not mean that you, are, you don't have pride. You can be prostrating, you can be leading for somebody. You can be doing yes, ma. Yes, sir. And yet be proud. The pride will be inside you. You will not know. You will know. Pride comes from area wherever you think that this boy, I'm not his mate, but let me just. That thing that tells us I'm not his mate, I'm older than him. He said, This sister, this neighbor, I'm older than this sister. I'm two years older than him. I'm two years older than how? It's pride. He's telling you, I am here, but you did not know. It must come to a era whereby you will come and you will humble yourself to the detail. That people will think you are a fool. The Lord was telling me about sitting. Oh God, ah, I don't want to speak. Sitting. He said his children must come to an era, a stage whereby you will be looking for somebody who will sit you. You will accept sitting inside you. When it comes to a state that you want to fight for your rights, you are not a child of God. Did Jesus fight for, fight for his rights? No. He said, follow my step. You must accept sitting inside you. You must accept it. That is when you will know. Uh -uh. But before I used to fight for my right. You will know that truly you are a child of God. Somebody slap you and you said, <laughs> thank you, sir. Slap this other one. Somebody called, wait, wait. Do you understand what the Bible is talking about? The cloth. He said, if somebody take a coat from you, he said, give him the inner one too. Do you know the meaning? Hmm. If you know the meaning, you will stop ask, you will, you will stop fighting for your right. But I'm not talking about fire uh, shooting now. I'm just bust. I'm just talking to the eye. I've just come to the eye. If you have to come to a level whereby sin is not found in you again, your eyes is not committing sin, your ears is not committing sin, your thought is not committing sin, your heart is not committing sin. Without this, you are going nowhere. Mark my word. All of you that is listening to me, mark my word. Without this, you are going nowhere. You are going nowhere. Your life must be a life of God. Wait, what do you even think that Jesus was saying when he said, be ye perfect as my father is perfect? 
Do you think that joke is that word is just a joking matter? It's more than a joking matter. It's a serious matter, a sincere matter, a deep, deep down matter. He said, be ye perfect as my father in heaven is perfect. It's a matter of a serious matter. You have to come to a level. Wait, how do you want to know that truly you are born again? Open your Bible to First John chapter 5. First John, First John. First John chapter 5. Verses 18. First John chapter 5. Eh? Let me read so that you can hear. First John chapter 5, verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. The sinneth God, the sinneth not. We know that whosoever is born of God, if truly God is God is your father. You will be the same with your father. You will not become a bastard. The sinner not. I know, Paul was saying, I know that whosoever is born of God, sinner not. The sinner not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. He keeps himself. He never sinned. He keeps himself. He consecrated himself. He sanctified himself. He makes his life holy and perfectly holy. Himself. He consecrates himself. And that the wicked one touch it him not. Let me tell you something. No matter how you can pray. No matter how you can fast, the demon will come to you. One of the things that will make you to know that truly you are, you are now born again is that the wicked torture them not. If you see dream and demons see attack you, it means there is a sin in your life. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Most of the time, I did not pray before I sleep. I don't ask you to do the same thing. Pray. Because I'm always busy preaching and preaching and preaching. Pray for somebody. I turn it to this. I turn it to that. But I might be on, the, on my laptop trying to, you know, to write messages and other things like that to post messages. And I will sleep on my laptop. I will not sleep. But devil himself no. He know who he, he know who is sleeping. Eh? <laughs> it's like a sleeping lion. <laughs> ah. You know, if a, a lion is sleeping, if, even he is sleeping, you know, when a lion is sleeping, he's sleeping, you yourself, you will be like, eh? he must not wake up. You'll be walking gently, even in his sleep. <laughs> Also, to those who live a holy life, a life that is perfect, you will sleep sometimes. Nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. I'm telling you. Nothing will happen. That they don't be as that. Oh my God! They don't burn set away to come and near you. When it comes to a time that you are going out and somebody attack you and it enters. You dream you hit in the dream. You dream that you ask you access in the dream. Oh God, there's a sin in your life. There's a sin in your life. You have to search for that sin. And that sin, in as much that sin is in your life, it means your name also is not in the book of life. Hallelujah. 
I remember a prophet, a man of God. I heard about him. That pastor, he just finished a revival in, a, in one dangerous village. After he finished the revival, he wanted to go and rest in his hotel, in the hotel the lodging. As he was asleep, he was about to sleep. He saw physically, physically, demon appear. That demon was carrying a, 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 you know, they call it kumayomba, like a stick, a big stick like this. He was carrying like this. The pastor, and he began to shout. <sighs> that demon was shouting. So the pastor was, ah, who is shouting? He now stand up and he look at the demon. He now, he now look. Are you the one disturbing me? You are the one shouting. And he is. And he turned it back and sleep well. <laughs> he did not cast out the demon. He didn't cast out. He didn't even cast it out. He didn't pray that God, I command fire. No, 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 no. He just, are you the one? I beg, don't disturb me. Oh. And he sleep back. And the demon was, ha, ha. <laughs> because he know who he is. He know who he is. That the, he is, you see the Bible now. He said, we know that whosoever is born of God, sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God, keepeth himself, is very careful about sin. And that wicked one toucheth him not. Oh, be that. They don't bore him where. Wait, wait. Don't you understand what the Bible is saying in Galatia chapter 6? You know what the Bible says? He said, Toss is oh God. He said, Do not bother me. Do not disturb me, for I bear the mark of Christ upon me. Before you can bear the mark of Christ upon you, you must be a, life, a, a man living a holy life. <laughs> ah. When you are living holy, that is when the mark will be upon your forehead. You will, you will enter danger. Danger will, danger will run for you. We run away from you. <laughs> eh? you, will go and, you will go and sleep on inside danger. Danger will say, I beg. I beg you now. You know, say, I don't come near you. I beg now. Leave me now. <laughs> ah! Vilia Katun Desaria. Eh? You will say death, come now. And that we said, ah, ah, bros, why go come? I'm so I know ah, ah I know if you come. I beg, leave me, I beg, make you I go, I beg you. He go, they beg you. <laughs> A prophet was in Nigeria, he has died now. He was very old before he died, very old, about 130 something years before he died. Is one is the is the vice. Is the vice prophet to oppose to Ayodi Deba Bolola? You know, Apostle Ayodi Deba Bolola died young at the age of fifty-five years. He died, so he was the he was the vice. They called him Baba Jide. Baba Jide was around one hundred and twenty something years when the spirit of death came. You know, even the spirit you know the traditional of man. This man is what they call man of God. This man was, he said, as he was sitting in his house, he said, no, how it happened is this. In the, in one day in the morning, he was standing on his uh, veranda. So he was just putting on like that. It was old. So one of the prophets was, one of his son in the Lord, they were passing by. And the pastor, he posted where? The past prophet, prophet, ah, ah, Baba, where does that? Good morning, sir. And Baba said, Baba said, ah, God bless you. It is well with you in Jesus' name. And I said, wait. Ah, I remember that just as the way you prostrate and greet me, the spirit of death came to me yesterday night. He came and prostrate to me and greet me just the way you greet me and said he want to come and take me. 
And I said, Madam, Mr. Ma, it is not yet my time. Go back. And the spirit of death said, yes, sir. And they turned back and go. You see that statement? <laughs> ah! There's no power in you becoming a son of God. I'm telling you. When you are son of God, my dear brother, forget them. When they even they want to shoot you like this, they put guns, it will not work. Eh? The spirit of death, it is that brother that said, eh? Death. He could, death. He came up straight to you. Ah. It has never happened in the one history now. When the time came and he wanted, he wanted to go, he, he's the one that said, ah, now, spirit of death, I am not ready to come, oh. And the spirit of death came and took him. You have, it is when you have the, the he said, for those who are the son of God, he gave them power to become the son of God. Those who believe in his name, he gave them power to be. That's power he gave to them. Is the one that is more than any power on earth. It is more than, more than any power on the, of, of the fake prophet. Wishes, wizard, uh, mami water, uh, abalis, uh, idol, a uh, demon, uh, Satan, uh, whatsoever the name might be, that power to become son of God that you have, that is one is powerful than all of them. You just stand up and just stand. Let them do whatever they want to do. Look at this. Look them like this. Try your best. Try. And I'm telling you, they will try and fail. But listen to me. If there is a single sin in your life, Pakam, you are in trouble. In as much a single sin is inside you, the devil will turn back. Let me tell you something. Praise God. If I want to tell you something, something just came to my mind. Do you know, for those who want God to set them free, don't pray for God to deliver you anymore. Stop it. You begin to ask, begin to wash yourself. Make sure that you are holy. Tell him to forgive you. Confess all your hidden sin. Make sure everything is holy with you. When you become holy, that joke will broke himself. I'm telling you. You will break that joke yourself. Make sure you are holy. When you are holy, oh, Minamara Kaposha, the power of sonship is given to you. Oh, my God. You will break it. And when you break it, it is gone. He gave them the power to become sons of God. The sons of God. And how will they know the sinned not? Before God can write out of we that you are here, maybe only one or two or three people, are, his name is in the book of life. Not all of you. Maybe only one. Maybe only two. Maybe only three. That their name will be written in the book of life. God did not just write names. He waits till your life is holy. Your path, you have a perfect life with him. You are renewed. You are born of God. It comes to a state that you did not think like a man again. Somebody was asking me money. One day. Something came to my mind one day. As a person asked me money. I have been giving that person money every time, every time, every time. So I feel something in my heart. I said, I don't want to give this person money again. I said, it's too much. It's asking too much. And I heard the voice very clearly and audible that I have to call my wife and say, do you hear the voice? And he said to me that as you are thinking in your heart that you are not going to give again because it's asking much. I'm also preparing now that everywhere you are getting money, I will block it. 
I, I not said why. He now said, I am a God that reward for those people who reward, who give away, who, who gave uh, reward boss wherever you planted. Yes. I not said, what do you mean, sir? He said to me, he said, if somebody came to you and maybe the person offended you and he said, I am sorry. And you forgive the person immediately. I, anytime you also offended me, and you just in a single word you said, I am sorry, I will also forgive you immediately. Said, I will also forgive you immediately. Say, I will also forgive you immediately. He said, Now, if somebody offends you and he beg you one time, second time, I'm sorry. Are you see? And you say, ah, sir, I am sorry four times. And you will see. Ah, ah, sir, I, I will not do it again. And you will see. Are you sure? What did you pay me? Oh, ah. 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 And you say, I, I, I know I've offended you. I'm sorry. Seven times. You know, I say, because of God, you know, because of God, you know, because of God, you know, I forgive you. Whenever you also offended God, you will beg God. You will beg him. You will beg him. You will beg him. You will beg before you forgive that sin. And I say, ah. He now said, that is why he said to his people that forgive those who sin against you. Immediately he said, I am sorry. Just uh, God bless you. It's all right, it's all right. I forgive him. Even before you say that, forgive him. Before you say that, forgive him. When you forgive somebody before you say that, whenever you mistakenly sin too, even though you don't know, God will also forgive you before you see anything out. In as much your act, I start desiring that I have seen. I want to ask God for forgiveness. Immediately God will forgive you because you also practical, you practice it. What am I saying? The book of life. The book of life is not about I am a holiness preacher, about I am this and that. I am I'm born again yesterday. I'm born again like 30 years ago. I'm born again uh, one month ago. I used to fight for 100 days. I used to fight for 5,000 days. It's not about that. I fight for four, for four years. I don't eat at all. It's not about that. It's not even do you like fight for till you die. Now you sabi. It's not about that. It's about you living a life of God, building your home in heaven, living a perfect life in God. If you, if anyone did not do that, do you know that all those times you will commit a single thing? Maybe you lie, you angry, you do all these things. Your name were not in the book of life. The book of life himself, he, auto, he knows who you are. He automatically delete himself and he automatic, automatically appears names. Nobody write it. Nobody write it. That's why I love people to correct me, even me myself. If you correct me, oh, you will be surprised. I will take it. I will. I will listen to you, and I will pray about it. And that is the mistake many pastors are doing now. When you correct them, they will feel big. I am there now. I am there. They will not listen to you. I am there. They will tell you I'm there. And that is what leads them to their destruction at the end. I pray the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Listen to me for those who did not know this. Open to Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. Twenty verse fifteen. I read, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. If your name is not written in the book of life, you are going to the lake of fire. You are going to hell fire. If your name is not written in the book of life, you are going to hell fire. God bless you.
by the special grace of God, we are going to, I'm going to end the prison here. I'm going to end the prison here. And I know God is going to bless you in Jesus' name. You and I, we make heaven at last in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. If you know that if Jesus come now, you are going nowhere. Uh, 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 but, but please open your microphone, everybody. Open, open your, your camera, open your microphone, everybody. If you know that if Jesus come now, you are going nowhere. Go on your knee. Put your right hand on your chest. If you know.